Hello, everybody. It's Tim here again, here with my another review. I figured I would jump into one of my favorite uh, film franchises that actually has one of my favorite films of all time in it, and that would be The Terminator. Schwarzenegger, The Terminator Special Edition. This is a special edition. It has a decent amount of special features. New state of the art 5.1 stereo mix, brand new other voices documentary, the new James Cameron interviews, a Terminator retrospective documentary, uh, Terminator deleted scenes with the audio commentary by James Cameron, hidden menu features, DVD ROM script to screen, an original mono audio track, original storyboards, trailers, TV spots, and more. So it's got a decent amount of stuff. I still feel like this film needs more special features and I believe there actually is a blu-ray a new blu-ray or, or at least a new blu-ray of this film coming out this year if that's true then I hope it has even more special features than this well if it doesn't then otherwise what's the point even buying it but anyway I hate these little snap cases like this these snapper things on DVD boxes I don't know if you can see it when you gotta pop it open like that I hate those things they're so stupid they're worthless I don't know why they keep making DVD boxes with those just to pop it open. Some more, I don't know if you can see that, some more Schwarzenegger action going on there. <laughs> but anyway, enough about this, this good looking DVD here, or case anyway. Jump into the film. Um, in the year 2029, the ruling supercomputer Skynet sends an indestructible cyborg, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, back in time to 1984 to kill Sarah Connor and Lyndall Hamilton before she can fulfill her destiny and save mankind. Okay, pretty much with this movie, I believe this came out in, well, it says it right here, 1984. So, this is a classic film. It has great special effects for its time. I've only, well, there's, everybody who's seen, I'm not going to, I'm going to review the whole franchise in this video, basically, of these movies. I'm not going to go too into detail with them. I mean, basically, everybody has the same nitpicks and problems with these movies. Pretty much, it's all the same for every person. I'll just go ahead and spoil it. Terminator 2 is the best in the franchise, in my opinion. And Terminator 2 is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, as far as this film goes, though, uh, the Terminator in front of the mirror scene in the movie has the weakest special effects out of the whole film, where you can obviously tell it's a puppet. I mean, that's obvious. Um, other than that, at the end of the film, when uh, Schwarzenegger is driving in the, uh, the, the truck or whatever, um, you can kind of tell it's like a, a miniature or whatever being pulled by a string. You can look if you look closely, you can see the string at the bottom of the truck. Um, that kind of annoyed me. But other than those two gripes about the special effects, I love the story of this film. Everybody knows the story of this film. Well, I just read it <laughs> as well. Um, basically, you got Schwarzenegger comes back in time as the Terminator title character. He looks badass. He is badass. Um, he comes back in time to kill the mother of the uh, savior of the human race. In the future, humans are at war with machines, basically, um, because of artificial intelligence has like took over. Um, James Cameron directs this movie. He does a great job. Um, I know I'm not really a big fan of James Cameron's new stuff, like. Titanic and Avatar. Not a huge fan of those movies, but I don't hate them. But I'm not a big fan of them either. Um, to me, like Terminator and Terminator 2, that kind of old school um, Cameron, I guess I guess it'd be old school now, <laughs> or considered old school now. That kind of his old school stuff like that, to me, is like the real vintage Cameron. And Aliens, those three movies to me are the real vintage Cameron. Um, I didn't mind The Abyss, though, but I wasn't blown away by it either. But uh, anyway, you got Michael Bean in this movie, who's uh, actually John Connor's dad, and he's from the future, so he gets sent back in time to protect Sarah Connor, and he's like he's in love with her, and uh, they sleep together, of course, and that causes the birth of John Connor, so it's like a time paradox, pretty much. Um, but uh, Michael Bean does a great job uh, because Schwarzenegger's character, he's a you know he's a cyborg, he's so strong and stuff and all that. And, he, he's like almost indestructible. You keep wondering how in the world is Michael Bean ever going to kill this thing. Um, you get great action scenes in the movie. Um, I, of course, you get the great line when Schwarzenegger walks into a police station and says, I'll be back before he kills everyone in the police station. But Sarah Connor, Lyndall Hamilton, who, who gives a great performance, she has a perfectly everyday look to herself, but I also think she's a uh, decent looking uh, I mean, I also think she's a, a good looking woman at the same time. She kind of scares me in the second movie, though. 
but here I think, I mean, I, I mean, she looks great in both movies, one and two, but she's so intense in the second one, though, she kind of scares me a little. But uh, I think she does great here. Her performance is fine. of like the everyday woman who, you know, you would never suspect to be the mother of the savior of the human race or whatever. Pretty much in the future, the humans are at war with machines because of artificial intelligence just took over and launched a bunch of nuclear bombs. And it's called Judgment Day. And all the human population that's left after the nuclear bombs has to fight the machines that's created by the artificial intelligence Skynet. But the humans are winning the war. And in order to, for the machine, the machines are losing, so Skynet wants to do a, um, has got like a, has got a plan where it wants to send, you know, uh, the ter a Terminator back in time um, to kill uh, John Connor's mom uh, before he's born. You know, to kill the savior of the human race's mom before he's born. So inadvertently, the machines would win the war because of that. So that's pretty much the plot, and it's pretty much like a, a horror movie, really. It's pretty much like an old, stylistic, dark and gritty horror sci-fi film, really. Almost, pretty much like, I mean. Like a slasher film, really as well. Now, Schwarzenegger is like pretty much like Jason, or pretty much like Jason, or whatever, just storming through there, taking people out left and right, but in a much cooler way because he's blasting the hell out of everybody. I love the the scene where he's in the uh, motel room, and uh, this dude's like, uh, "Buddy, you got a dead cat in there?" And he's like looking for appropriate responses, and he says, "Fuck you, asshole." I love that. That's great. Um, but uh, yeah, and you get the classic "I'll be back" line. For the first, this is um, first time Schwarzenegger says it. Now it's way overused, but here it's great. I love it hearing it in this movie. I'll be back. <laughs> I love it. Um, pretty much at the end of the movie, Schwarzenegger gets blown up in a truck by a pipe bomb by Michael Bean. Who Michael Bean's character's name is Kyle Reese. He's John Connor's dad. Um, Schwarzenegger gets blown up in the truck. Think he's dead, but then the actual friggin' Terminator machine comes up out of the rubble or whatever. I thought that was cool. Terminator 2 is my favorite movie of these, but this movie has my favorite ending where you actually get to see the uh, complete metal Terminator. But there's another, I almost forgot, there's another little plot hole thing here. Because the metal Terminator moves so slow, why do they run into a building where they can be cornered? When they can just easily, like, out, just outrun him by jogging and be half a mile away before he even gets a chance to make it, you know, off of the end of the street. You could be way away from this thing easily. But anyway... So at the end of it, Kyle Reese blows him up with a pipe bomb, blows up the actual cyborg, I mean the actual robot underneath the living tissue of Arnold or whatever, he blows it up with a pipe bomb, but he dies <clears throat> during the explosion, and then Lyndall Hamilton is still alive, and you think the Terminator's dead, shit, he keeps coming, he ain't got no legs, he's crawling after, you think he might actually get her, I mean, like, you're like, well, you basically, as the audience, you're thinking, how much could this thing take, which I love that. And he crawls under like this big hydraulic press, and she presses his button. You get the great line by Lyndall Hamilton, you're terminated, fucker, and she uh, squishes it with the hydraulic press. I love that. That was great. Um, but, yeah, classic film. Great movie. Obviously a four-star film out of four. Really enjoyable. Schwarzenegger at his best. I love seeing Schwarzenegger as a bad guy in this film. I wish we would have gotten that again in one of the other films. But um, he's just too popular as the hero figure by... After Terminator 2, I mean, so you're you're never gonna get Schwarzenegger as like the hardcore killing machine again, like in this movie. Or at least I don't think he will. But as far as this film goes, four stars. American Terminator 2 here. I love this case for the uh, Terminator 2 Extreme Edition. It's really cool. I get a kick out of it. It's two discs. It comes with an extended version of the movie. The extended version of the movie I don't really care about. I mean, you don't really get anything much interesting in the extended version, except like a, a neat little scene where the T-1000 is malfunctioning at the end of the movie, and you see him like he can't control like how his uh like when he touches something, he can't stop himself from like sticking to whatever it is he touches, and he can't stop himself from blending with whatever he touches. Um, <clears throat> but other than that scene, there's really nothing else worth watching in the extended version. You get a horrible scene where Schwarzenegger's like trying to copy some guy's smile or whatever. It's like for comedy relief. It's a horrible scene. This is Schwarzenegger's best performance in my opinion. I love his performance in this film because you already saw his performance in the first movie as the unstoppable killing machine and now he's an unstoppable hero in this one. You get, everybody knows the plot of this. Basically it's almost the same thing as the first film except it's not really a horror movie this time. It's more like an action um, <clears throat> anti-nuclear war movie really action drama anti-nuclear war film um but um 
that's what I love about these first two films, especially this one. This film has real heart to it. It has a lot of cool action and a great villain in the T-1000, played by Robert Patrick, who does an excellent job. Um, he's great. The T-1000 is such a was such a brilliant idea for this movie, and still is to this day. This, the computer animation, like one or two scenes, uh, is a little dodgy because it's dated a little bit, but 99% of the computer animation in this movie holds up and is better than 99% of the computer animation of today, and is better than not, is better than the computer animation in the next two movies, which is hilarious. The special effects in this movie, the Terminator 2, I think, came out in 1990. Well, it says one on the back, but I think it, I thought it was 1992, but whatever. The special effects in this movie are better than Terminator 3 and 4. <laughs> but anyway, um. It's basically got two Terminators coming back in time. This one, I mean, in this one, you got Arnold as the good guy, and you got the T-1000 played by Robert Patrick as the bad guy. You get Arnold beating the hell out of a bunch of people in the biker bar. You get the Bad to the Bone song when he comes out in his leather jacket and everything. He rides off on his motorcycle, and you're like, yeah, that's that's badass right there. He might as well have like badass tattooed on his forehead. But uh, yeah, that's great. Arnold does a great job here. It's my favorite performance of his because you already saw him as the bad guy and how great he was in the first movie. And this movie is just so epic to see him turn around and be the hero. And because of Arnold's charisma in the role, he doesn't say a lot. Now some people might be like, well, it's his greatest performance because he doesn't say anything. But no, he has great charisma in the role and has like a likability factor to him. Where he's like larger than life as the Terminator. That's why I can only see him as the Terminator. I know O.J. Simpson was one of the choices in the first movie as the, to be the Terminator, but they thought he was too much. He was too nice of a guy to ever you couldn't buy him as a killer because he was too nice, which is hysterical thinking about that now. But anyway, but yeah, that's why it's my greatest, my favorite performance of his because it's already been built up by the first movie, and he has great charisma in the role and real likability. And at the end of it, you're really rooting for him because he keeps going through so much to protect John Connor and Sarah Connor. John Connor, played by Edward Furlong, is the weakest actor in the movie. He's not bad, but uh, he's a kid, you know, so he's not going to be fantastic. But he has the weakest acting in the cast. Sarah Connor and her transformation from the first movie into this movie, where now she's like a badass who's bulked up and got muscle and is whooping ass and taking names. It's a great character transition, how she's toughened up. I love that. Um, great scenes with the T-1000 where he like, walks through bars. Uh, at the mental institution that uh, Lyndall Hamilton is at, and Arnold and um, John Connor basically go to break her out. Great scene, great special effects. Um, <clears throat> I really also love the scene at the end of the Basically, this movie, I mean, you get a lot of great action in the, in the, you know, about like halfway, I think, through the movie it is. They want to, you know, try to actually stop Judgment Day from happening, so they want to destroy, you know, any any kind of stuff that will lead to Skynet. That's basically the stuff that's going to lead to its creation is the um, computer or the chip or whatever from the Terminator from the first movie and his arm is going to lead to the creation of Skynet in the future. So they want to go destroy all that. And so that's really interesting and uh, interesting time travel idea. Basically in the first movie it seemed like it was going to be like a paradox, like everything was a loop. But in this movie you get the idea that you can, you know, change the future, which I thought, you know, is even cooler. If you can travel through time, uh, it makes sense to me that you would be able to change time. So I go for the more, you know, being able to change the timeline kind of thing in this movie. That makes more sense to me. Um, but yeah, they pretty much go to the, the Cyberdyne company or whatever, which is the company that's uh, got the uh, Terminator arm and the chip. They destroy it, blow it up. You get great scenes with Arnold with a, a mini gun where he's like blowing up all these cop cars and he even shoots them all in the legs with a pistol later because he, he, he doesn't kill anybody because John Connor doesn't want him to, which I love that. Um, you get the great scene at the beginning where T-1000 or Liquid Man, whichever you prefer to call him, Robert Patrick, is uh, driving in a, uh, a truck or whatever after John Connor. He, the, he's, on the, he's in the truck and he comes plowing like, off the top of a bridge. It goes completely like down and falls down on the, the ground like right in front of John Connor. That's a great scene. Um, but, uh, yeah, and you get great action in the movie with Arnold and a great, you know, duke it out with, uh, with, uh, Schwarzenegger and Robert Patrick in the movie where they're fighting each other. And the T-1000 keeps taking so much damage. He gets shot all the time, but he never dies. There's even a scene where Arnold, like, blows his head in half, but it goes back together. So you're like, you know, what can kill this thing? And then at the end of the movie when Arnold's like, you think he's dead because the T-1000 is like, caused one of his arms to come off. 
and uh, stabbed a big you know metal rod through him. But he uses his last bit of power to like pull the rod out, baby, and he throws it down. And he he uh, grabs his gun, and uh, I think it's like a grenade launcher. And he comes. Uh, I'm not an expert on guns, but I'm 99 percent sure it's a grenade launcher. Um, and he comes. Arnold pops up at the last second. He he comes like he's riding on this thing. And uh, so uh, Lyndall Hamilton and Edward Furlong are like, get down, and they jump down. And he shoots the T-1000 with a grenade, and the Robert Patrick just like looks down and raises back up. And it's like he's like real surprised, you know, that he just got you know, hit by the uh, uh, by the uh, Arnold Terminator, and he like blows apart in this crazy looking effect where it's like part of his body's like twisting around and everything, and then he like falls backwards into this like molten steel, I guess it is, or acid or whatever. He falls backward into it, or backwards into it, I mean, and uh, he's like transforming in all these different forms that he took in the movie, and like none of them are, none of them are helping him. You can't escape the uh, molten steel or whatever, no matter what. So he disintegrates in a great epic scene. That alone makes this movie worth watching, that scene does. And then you get the heartbreaking scene at the end of it where Arnold, you know, they destroy the arm and the chip, and he has to destroy himself because, you know, he's a Terminator, and if anybody finds him, he could still, they could use him to lead the creation of Skynet. So he disintegrates himself in the molten, well, no, he gets uh, Lyndall Hamilton to lower him down into the molten steel, and she, like, shakes his hand before he goes because she respects him. You know, now he's, like, earned her respect because of all the help he's been giving them in the movie. So that's awesome how she trusts him now after being scared to death of him in the first movie. That's great character trend development. Um, she lowers him down in it. And you get a little, he gets a bit cheesy where he's doing the thumbs up, you know, as he's disintegrating. But at the same time, you've warmed up to the character so much and you've rooted for, you've rooted for him so much that it still hits you, you know, right here. Till this day, best Arnold movie. Bottom line, in my opinion, best Arnold movie. <clears throat> but yeah, four stars out of four. Okay, then we jump into Terminator 3. I saw this in the theater when it came out. I was so excited for this movie because Terminator 2 was so epic and I wanted this one to live up to the second film. <coughs> it does not live up to the second film. It doesn't have. <coughs> sorry. Um, but um, when I watched this film in theaters, I hated it. I hated it when I seen it in theaters. Such a disappointment to me. But then I re then I watched it again later and realized that these two movies are directed by James Cameron. They have his signature style. This movie is a totally different style. I went in expecting something that would continue the style of the first two James Cameron movies, not realizing that this is a whole new director directed by Jonathan Mostow, who actually directed a Kurt Russell movie I like called Breakdown. But uh, uh but this is uh, his style. It's totally different than the first two movies. This movie has humor in it, a lot of humor, which the first two did not have. They didn't have a shitload of humor like this. Terminator 2 had a little bit. This movie has a lot. Um, you get horrible scenes, though, where the Terminator shows up at the beginning of it. He walks into, like, a strip bar, and it's like a parody scene of Terminator 2, how he got his clothes in that movie. And he gets his clothes from a stripper, like some kind of gay guy stripper or whatever, whatever. I don't know what it was, something like that. But he's the guy looks at him and says, like, talk to the hand, and Arnold, like, actually grabs his hand and looks at it and goes, now. <laughs> That's stupid. <clears throat> um, but uh, then I realized what kind of style this movie's going for. This movie doesn't have the heart of the first two movies at all. This movie has no heart to it. What this film is going for is a fun um, <clears throat> roller coaster action blockbuster movie. That's what this is. That's what this is going for. It's not going, this movie does not try to be serious, except for the ending of the movie where, where you, they're trying to stop Judgment Day and you think they're going to, uh, but um, because they're going to like Skynet Central or Base or whatever where they think they can turn Skynet's systems off, you think they're going to stop Skynet, but it turns out they can't stop Skynet, the bombs go off anyway, and Judgment Day has happened, and now pretty much it's the, you know, the timeline has <coughs> come full circle. It's time for the machine war to happen against the humans that are left after Judgment Day. That's a great ending by far, best ending of the entire franchise, hands down, in my opinion. But other than that, that's the only part of the movie that has any heart to it at all. The rest of this movie is just a fun um, action blockbuster movie. That's all this is, is a fun action blockbuster movie. There's no heart to the movie. Arnold gives his weakest performance, like it really seems like he doesn't. I mean, I kind of get the feeling that he just did this movie for the money. 
and that just to have one last, you know, hurrah as the Terminator character before he went into politics. But uh, this is his weakest performance yet. Um, but also because you don't really get attached to this, to this Arnold, you know, Terminator. Each movie is a different Arnold Terminator, and in this one he's playing pretty much like a Terminator who has like a goofy sense of humor because he doesn't know how to relate to humans. They play off of like Arnold's deadpan humor because it's like, <clears throat> where uh, uh, John Connor's like, you're shitting me. And Arnold goes, no, I'm not shitting you. It's like, that's funny. I actually laughed at that. But uh, they like this. This Terminator doesn't have the emotional connection because there's nobody for him to like gravitate onto. In the second film, the Arnold Terminator was like a father figure for John Connor, and in this movie, he's just like you know a protector. He just protected him and just does cool in the action, and that's it. There's no like emotional you know grip to the character in this movie, which that that costs the movie, in my opinion, like the heart of the picture. There's nothing. There's nothing here. It's another time travel story. <clears throat> I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing here in terms of heart. I mean, Kristana Loken, who plays the TX in the movie, she does good. She's not as intimidating as the T1000, but she does good in the action scenes. And I really actually liked her nanotechnology gun or whatever, where she can make different weapons out of her hand. And plus, she's hot, so I don't hurt none. And um, you know, she has like she has more enhanced strength and everything. I actually liked how she could like taste blood. And uh, do a DNA scan and find out who people are or whatever. I thought that was kind of neat, even though she gives a stupid face when she does it, <laughs> when she tastes John Connor's blood or whatever in the movie. John Connor played by Nick Stahl. He's fine. The actor does fine. Uh, but I just didn't like the way the character was portrayed because he hasn't evolved any since the second movie. This is a guy who's supposed to save mankind, but he's no different here than he really was in Terminator 2. He just knows how to work guns a bit better. That's pretty much it. Pretty much the same character as he was in Terminator 2. He hasn't evolved into the uh, super badass John Connor like he should have been in this movie. He should have been like a really tough guy in this movie. <clears throat> Not like the same character he was in Terminator 2. This is pretty much just the character from Terminator 2 growed up. And he's exactly the same. He hasn't evolved any is what I'm saying. There's no development to him from this movie to that movie. Sarah Connor is dead in the movie. She died of leukemia. Linda Hamilton didn't want to come back or she asked for too much money won. I don't know. I forgot which. But uh, So they had to write her out, which I don't blame. I, that doesn't bother me because they had to do that. They had no choice. <clears throat> um, you get great action in the movie, though, where Arnold is, uh, is like chasing after the uh, TX who's driving in this giant crane is like wrecking the entire street. And like Arnold gets on the crane and he gets... You know, he gets thrown into these buildings. He's on like the crane ball. It's really cool. And then Arnold actually causes the crane to flip in the air. Uh, that's really cool. Great special, great special effects. This crane chase is a lot of fun. Best action spot in the movie. And um, it started to get kind of boring towards the uh, um, later middle of the movie, where uh, <clears throat> where it was like uh, just Arnold and John Connor and oh, Claire Danes, who's his love interest in this movie. She's, like, going to be John Connor's wife in the future. I never felt that John Connor needed a wife or kids or a family or anything like that. I mean, I just never felt like that was anything that needed to be added to the character. I mean, he's defending the human race. He doesn't really have time to raise a family. But anyway, <laughs> whatever. I never really felt like he needed a character like that. But I guess she's supposed to be, like, the Sarah Connor character replacement or whatever. <clears throat> but she's all right. But she's not anything memorable. She's nowhere near as good as Lyndall Hamilton. She's take it or leave it. But, um... Uh, you get a funny cameo by Dr. Silverman, who was in the first and second movie. He was the guy that like ran the mental institution that Sarah was at in the second film, and he was at he was a uh, worked at the uh, uh, he was at the police station. I mean, in the first movie, um, trying to evaluate like Kyle Reese's uh, mental condition. <laughs> but you get a great cameo by him in this movie, where he sees Arnold again. You know, after the second movie, and he like takes off running. I thought that was hilarious because <laughs> he's freaked out to see him again. But uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the movie gets a little boring towards the middle, but the end of it picks up because you're at the, you're at like this army base or whatever, where, uh, Catherine Brewster, Claire Dane's character's dad works at, and he's the one that basically is in control of the Skynet project now. It's another big plot hole. How the hell is Skynet back when all the stuff to make them was destroyed? That was gonna lead to their creation was destroyed. How are they being created? They're just, basically this movie goes with the time travel idea that this is a completely different time travel idea than the first and second movie. Um, <clears throat> where um, in this movie, 
this goes by the time travel, you know, idea that anything that's going to happen is going to happen no matter what, and no matter if you change things, uh, it's just the timeline's just going to fix itself, and everything's going to happen anyway, just in a slightly different way, but it's going to happen no matter what. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm not really a big fan of that kind of time travel idea, but I accepted it because I know some people, well, the only thing I hate about it is it makes the Terminator 2 worthless. It makes it completely useless. Everything you did in Terminator 2 is just worthless. Because if there's no way to stop anything, there's, there's no point in it. <laughs> but, uh, so I hated it for that. But once you get past that, um, I mean, I deduct points from the movie for that, but once you get past that, the ending is fun. You can see, like, the first model Terminators are, like, these big machines with mini guns on the side. Arnold kills two of them in a cool scene um, where he, like, rips one of the mini guns off and blows the hell out of one of them. Um, cool scene. <clears throat> You get like the couple little tiny uh, hunter killers, HKs, Terminators, or whatever, flying around. You get some of them little flying ones. That's cool. Um, at the end of it, I actually, I think, I, I like the ending actually, where Arnold like crashes his helicopter into a building, and he's like, I'm back, and he takes his like power cell in his body, which is kind of stupid that he has like a nuclear power cell because the Terminator was crushed in the first movie and he didn't blow up when it had one, should have had one as well. So I'm like, what? <laughs> but anyway, so he takes out like this power cell he's got in his chest and shoves it in uh, TX's mouth. Uh, TX played by Cristiano Loca, and he says, "You are terminated." She blows up. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know why I'm coughing so much like, here in the last couple minutes, but that was cool. Um, but yeah, the action in the movie is good. It's just a mindless action Arnold movie with him as the Terminator again. That's what this is. There's no heart to this movie. Um, you get two discs, though. You get a lot of special features on this thing, which I liked. Yeah, uh, you get a lot. You get a lot of good special features. You get a lot of cool action in the movie, but there's no like heart, no emotional grip to the story, like there was in the the second movie. But uh, it's just a fun, dumb action movie, really, is all it is. So for that, I'd give it three stars out of four. It's nowhere near as good as the first two, but it doesn't even try to be like the first two. It doesn't try to be serious until the end. <laughs> but up until then, it's just like a dumb, funny, action blockbuster movie. And for that, it's a mindless entertainment. <clears throat> so I just give it three stars for being mindlessly entertaining. If I judge the movie as like a serious film, like the first two were, it'd be like just a barely passable two stars. I would hate it, because that's how I judged it when I watched it in theaters. But watching it now... As for what it is, which is just a mindless action movie, because that's the exact tone the movie's going for. They're just trying to have fun with Arnold as the Terminator. They're not trying to make some serious epic film like T2. And so for that, I'd give it three stars. It's mindless, you know, goofy action blockbuster entertainment. It's good, you know, as that, because that's what it's trying to be. But most people will hate it, because that's what it's trying to be. Most people would have wanted it to be serious like the first two movies. But if you try to watch it, <clears throat> and judge it by those kind of standards, you'll hate it. But if you watch it for what it is, just a silly, mindless entertainment movie, action blockbuster movie, which is what it is trying to be, and that's what it is, in my opinion, then you'll enjoy it just for the action. It's three stars just for the action. It's just a run-of-the-mill action blockbuster movie. It's no better or worse than any other one. <clears throat> now this film, first of all, you got Christian Bell as John Connor. Great cast. He does nothing in the movie. He's worthless. John Connor does nothing. We've had three movies building up to John Connor, and even a TV series if you count the Sarah Connor Chronicles, and he does nothing in this movie. Nothing. All the story goes to Sam Worthington. Who actually, I liked his character, but I had to like him because he's the only one with a story in the movie. <clears throat> but, it, but you get like this, this, I mean, this movie should have been all about John Connor. Instead, it's all about Sam Worthington, um, who's an actor that a lot of people I see, I see like they really hate this guy. But uh, I don't really mind him too much. I think he's at least decent <clears throat> acting wise. But yeah, I think he's at least decent acting wise. I don't really mind him that much. Christian Bale is a much better actor than Sam Worthington in my opinion. But his character does nothing in this movie. You know, he screams like every line he gets. Even at the end of the movie when Sam Worthington's character, um, whose name I forgot. <laughs> he's like, uh, Marcus. Marcus Wright is his name. He's like, die. He's dead. And, uh, Christian Bell's trying to bring him back to life and he keeps like shocking him. 
uh, trying to defibrillate him, back to life, and at the same time, Christian Bell's like screaming in his face. I'm like, why do you keep yelling, man? And there's like this scene at the end of it where Christian Bell's in the Terminator factory, and there's like this little kid standing there, and Christian Bell just looks at her and yells at her and goes, You! Move! It's so over the top, I couldn't help but crack up laughing. <laughs> his performance, he's just directed so bad <laughs> to the way he has to act. And it's what I've heard is that he was supposed to play Sam Worthington's character, and then at the last minute he wanted to play John Connor's character instead. So they had to completely rewrite the script to give John Connor more scenes in the movie. I believe that. In my opinion, that is true. There's no doubt in my mind that that's true. But uh, it will explain a lot. <clears throat> Basically, this film takes place in the future, like a couple years after Terminator 3. Um, uh, John Connor's wife in the movie, I believe, is played by Bryce Dallas Howard. She does nothing in the movie. She's completely worthless. Could have been completely wrote out. <clears throat> but I believe she was actually pregnant in real life, so she couldn't have done anything in the movie anyway. So I'm like, why even cast her? Can you just make the pregnancy with another actor in the movie or something? You know. <laughs> but uh, I mean, because John Connor's wife is supposed to, he's supposed to have a kid according to Terminator 3. So the case way would make sense that his wife is pregnant. But why hire an actual pregnant woman? Why not just get somebody else? And, do a fake pregnancy thing or whatever because you know her character does nothing in the movie but whatever um, <clears throat> you get uh, Anton Yelchin I believe is how you say his name I actually like this actor he uh, plays the young Michael Bean in the movie the young Kyle Reese he does good he actually has a lot of charm and charisma he's fine in the movie um, he's probably the best out of the cast honestly him and uh, um, Sam Worthington are because they have like the only main story of the movie because John Connor is useless Pretty much in the movie, like Sam Worthington wakes up in the future after he's been executed and he doesn't know what's going on, so they have to fill him up to date, you know, that uh, people are at war with machines. And, <laughs> you know, it's spoiled in the actual trailer of the movie that he finds out he's a Terminator as well. They spoil it in the trailer, and you can kind of see it coming from a mile away. He gets stupid scenes where he, like, wakes up, runs out in the rain, and looks up in the, in the sky, and goes, ah! Like over and over, just keeps yelling. It's so bad, <laughs> so bad. Horrible scene for Sam Worthington's character. Um, so him and Anton Yelchin or whatever, Cal Reese, if you prefer to call him, they're uh, like traveling. <clears throat> they're traveling around, and uh, they get attacked by this big giant Terminator who looks like a total rip off of Transformer robot. And there's these two really cheesy motorcycle Terminators called Moto Terminators, I think. And they look really. They're just so cheesy, but uh. <laughs> Actually, you get some fun action with them though, and even the big Transformer robot, you get some fun action. Or Sam Worthington tries to like blow it up and stuff. And you get some cool action by Sam Worthington on a bridge, where he like attaches a, a hook to one of the uh, motorcycle Terminators, and it gets like flung in the air and like hits a an HK Terminator and blows it up. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> you get some cool action still, but this I would say this has weaker action than Terminator Three. I will say this has weaker action altogether than Terminator 3, though. But, um, pretty much Kyle Reese gets captured, and this is another humongous plot hole that's really unforgivable. The machines have captured Kyle Reese, and in the movie they even state that the machines want to kill Kyle Reese, so they have Kyle Reese captured. Why don't they just kill Kyle Reese? Because if Kyle Reese is dead, then John Connor will cease to exist. I mean, you could say that, well, if they don't send a Terminator back in time, then Skynet will never get built or whatever. But if it's inevitable, according to Terminator 3, then it'll get built anyway. Uh, but uh, I believe this film, though, goes by the logic of Terminator 2, that kind of logic where you can change the future. <clears throat> but anyway, it still doesn't make any sense that they wouldn't at least try try that method, you know, by try to kill Kyle Reese and see what happens. It still doesn't make any sense that they wouldn't at least try that. So that's stupid. Um, you get an Arnold cameo at the end. Pretty much, uh, Christian Bell goes to rescue Kyle Reese at the Terminator factory, which is when the movie really picks up. It's pretty dull in other spots until then because John Connor does nothing in the movie. He's worthless. So you keep thinking the whole time you're watching the movie, when is Christian Bell going to do something? <laughs> um, you get a lot of cheesy callback lines to the first two movies, like um, I'll be back and uh, come with me if you want to live. I'm starting to hate those lines so bad by this point. Um, at the end of the movie, pretty much, Marcus goes to rescue Kyle Reese. Um, one other thing is Skynet's plan for Marcus is horrible. They basically wanted him to infiltrate the uh, 
resistance and bring John Connor to like, or get John Connor to come rescue his his dad or whatever. They didn't even need Marcus to do that. They could just like send John Connor a message or something or any or any kind of way to get him to come there to do that. They didn't need Marcus for that. <laughs> he would have came to rescue his dad no matter what. But anyway, that's stupid. And also it's stupid because in the movie, the other Terminators try to kill Marcus every time they see him. So why are they trying to kill him if he's secretly working for Skynet and he doesn't even know it? Because if one of the other Terminators would have killed him by accident, the whole plan would have you know, been messed up. So I'm like, ooh. <laughs> the plot is horrible. This is the worst plot, worst scripted plot of all these movies. Um, <laughs> At the end of the movie, you get Arnold cameo, CGI Arnold. It looks all right, but because this movie is PG-13, which is a disgrace, that it's PG-13 should have been rated R. But because it's PG-13, the Arnold Terminator doesn't kill anybody. He just keeps grabbing Christian Bell and throwing him around. I hated that. I hated it. Um, at the end of it, you think John Connor is going to be the one to kill the Arnold robot or whatever. He like um, shoots this stuff and this molten like. This molten um, magma, whatever, comes down on uh, the Arnold robot or cyborg and uh, drowns him in it. And then, uh, and then John Connor freezes him. So it's like reverse. Instead of being freezing and then melted, he's melted and then frozen. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. One, two, a little bit too many callbacks to the other films. But uh, you get a cool scene, though, where the uh, Terminator like scratches John Connor's face, Christian Bell's face, and you get like the scar on his face. Um, that's cool. I, I thought that was a neat little tie-in. Um, but uh, and you think that you know uh, they're gonna let John Connor actually have a moment to shine, you know, other than that where he kills the Terminator because you know he's the savior of mankind basically. But no, he doesn't kill him. Uh, Sam Worthington gets brought back to life because uh, Christian Bale like defibrillates him because they keep saying in the movie Sam Worthington has a strong heart or whatever, and like the Terminator punches him in his heart and causes him to like basically die. But uh, Christian Bell brings him back to life. Christian Bell gets stabbed through the back with a metal rod. And then Sam Worthington jumps up, takes the metal rod, shoves it into the Terminator's neck, and breaks off its uh, head in a really cool scene. But at the same time, I'm thinking, why didn't you let John Connor finish the Terminator? Why do we even care about John Connor? He does nothing. He doesn't he doesn't even defeat the main bad guy in the movie, which is the Arnold Terminator. He doesn't even defeat him. So I'm like, <laughs> this movie just feels most useless out of the four movies because of that. Because John Connor is not even a, a character in this movie, really. He's like a screaming mad guy. Why didn't they just hire Arlie Ermey? <laughs> but um, Christian Bell is one of my favorite actors, too, and this is by far the worst per the worst performance I've ever seen him give because he's got nothing to do. Um, <clears throat> so that Arnold's dead. They fly out of there in a helicopter. The place gets blowed up in a pretty cool explosion. All through the movie, you keep getting Marcus saying that he wants to have a second chance and do some good with his life because he did something horrible. But all he ever says is that he, all you ever know is that he caused his brother to get killed and three other people or something like that. But they never explain what he did. And all through the movie, he's a good person. So you're thinking, how could this guy have ever been bad or done something wrong when he's so good in the whole movie? So it makes his whole character arc seem useless when you don't even know what his problem is. <laughs> but uh, that's stupid. I hated that. So he pretty much wants to get his heart to save John Connor. Uh, I know a lot of people complain about the fact they do a heart open heart surgery in a tent at the end of the movie. Most people don't even know how how an open heart surgery is even done. So I think a lot of people complaining about that are just people trying to nitpick or they've uh, heard from other people how to, how an open heart surgery is done. I mean, I'm sure there's people who actually do know, but uh, it does seem like people are nitpicking a little bit. I mean, it's a movie. I'm willing to give the movie that because, shit, I don't know how an open heart surgery is done, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me at the end of it. <clears throat> but, uh, I mean, that just really seems like it fall under the who really cares, you know, idea. But, uh, anyway, I mean, I don't know. I just think people are kind of grabbing at that one a little bit too much. But if it, if, it, if it bothers you, to each your own, you know, whatever. <clears throat> but, uh, and then you, at the, after that, you know, Marcus is dead, so that, I'm like, I'm disappointed because of that, because he was the best character in the whole movie. I don't care about John Connor, why does he get to live? He didn't do nothing. <laughs> but Christian Bell's still alive, and 
you get a setup for a sequel at the end where they throw it in there. I hate when movies do that where they throw in like a sequel bait where he's like, um, Skynet still remains strong. We're gonna take him out pretty much. And he's like, there's no fate but what we make. <laughs> um, I hate when movies throw sequel bait in there because you never know when you're gonna if you're gonna get a sequel or not. And this movie made the lowest of all the Terminator films, so no, you're not gonna get a sequel to this, or at least not a direct sequel. I know we got Terminator Genesis or Genesis or Sis or whatever coming out. Um, uh, that's a whole new story. It's not a sequel to this movie. Uh, it's kind of it's a reboot, but it's a reboot in like a Back to the Future 2 style way where the characters go back in time and change stuff, which causes the uh, movie timeline to be different. So you can count it as Terminator 5, but at the same time it's a reboot, you know, like the new Star Trek movie was. So it's it's a sequel, but a reboot at the same time. Pretty much like the new Star Trek. But um, yeah, as far as this film goes, I'd give it two and a half stars. When all is said and done, it's an all right movie. You get some okay action. You get some good action scenes every now and then. And Sam Worthington's character, at least, um, he gets the most to do in the movie. But because John Connor is so worthless in the movie, and because he gets to do nothing in the movie, and because the PG-13 violence neuters the movie in terms of the actual Terminators, and also because of the PG-13 rating, this movie, the future in this movie looks nothing like the future as shown in Terminator 1, 2, and 3. There's no blue looking light in the movie like the way the, <coughs> way the night shots look. There's no blue tint to it. There's also hardly any night shots. There's no skulls everywhere. Uh, no dead bodies everywhere. No skeletons everywhere, which there would be. Um, so, that right there automatically makes me think this is a wussy Terminator movie. But yeah, I'd give it P yeah, for, for what it is, I'd give it two and a half stars. Once again, the end of it, the Terminator Factory picks the movie up and is at least entertaining. It's all right movie. I mean, it's like a an all right time waster. It's the weakest of the movies. The reason I I'm, I used to like this movie better than Terminator Three, but when I started watching Terminator Three for what it is, which is just a popcorn mindless. Um, blockbuster movie, I'd start liking it better when I saw it for what it really was. Whereas this movie takes itself completely seriously, and because of that I have to judge it more uh, harshly than I would if it was just a silly popcorn movie. <clears throat> so that's why it comes off as the weakest film in the series. That, the fact that it has the worst script with some big plot holes. Uh, but yeah, all in all, that's my wrap up for the Terminator series. Four stars, four stars <laughs> for the first two. Three for Mindless Entertainment, part three. <laughs> and two and a half for part four. <clears throat> they really need to rework this script even more than just to add more to John Connor scenes. But uh, I'm actually looking forward to Terminator 5. I know a lot of people are backlashing against it because it's going to be PG-13 as well. But at the same time, it looks like it's going to be in a similar vein to Terminator 3, which is going to be a mindless blockbuster of Arnold just blowing stuff up. It doesn't. It, once again, it looks like it's not going to have a heart to the movie. There's not going to be any heart in it. Uh, no soul to the movie. It's just going to be mindless entertainment, just a blockbuster film, just to kill time with. So at the very least, at the very least, I'm expecting it to be at least an all right movie similar to this, where it probably won't be horrible, but at least all right. <clears throat> But at, uh, judging from the trailers of the new movie, at its best, I would say it would be as good as this one, T3. Um, I really don't think there needed to be any more sequels after part one and two. To me, to me, these two are the franchise. This is the story, beginning, middle, and end. These other movies are just like, just fun extras that you may or may not have fun with, depending on what you want to see in a Terminator movie. There's really no reason for them to exist. In my opinion, the story was over in Terminator 2. The rest of the movies are just... Well, this movie's just a fun action movie. This movie is a movie with a horrible script, <laughs> bad plot holes, <clears throat> but at least has um, some good action in it every now and then and a cool ending in the Terminator factory. But robs John Connor, the character, the hero of the franchise, or the prophesized hero of the franchise, completely of the spotlight. And that's more unforgivable <laughs> to me than anything in the other three movies, even that it's, I hate that more than, I, I mean, I hate that even more than I did, than I do the humor in part three, because this character's been built up so much, and he, they just do nothing with him, but yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the new movie, just because 
it looks like it'll be at least mindless entertainment. You know, it looks like it'll at least be a, a decent movie in like the mindless entertainment genre. <laughs> uh, but I don't like Jack Courtney. I don't think he looks like a good Kyle Reese at all. Um, the girl who plays Lyndall Hamilton, Lyndall Hamilton's character, Sarah Connor, I believe is like Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones, which is a show I don't actually watch, but I've heard good things about it. She looks all right. And Arnold, once again, he's he'll be fine as a Terminator. Uh, he could do the the role in his sleep by now. The guy who plays the T-1000 uh, does a great job as Robert Patrick's replacement. Um, I don't know why they just didn't get Robert Patrick, though. Kind of weird. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> But, um, and John Connor as a Terminator in the movie, that's at least more interesting than what they did with him in Terminator Salvation. So that's at least something new. <laughs> um, so yeah, I look forward to the movie just as like a mindless action film just to kill time. I look forward to it in that kind of way. So I'll see you guys again with another review. And, uh, I've had fun talking about the Terminator franchise for going on 45 minutes now. <laughs> but, um,. Oh, another thing. One last thing. The guy who directed Terminator Salvation, his name is Mick G. Don't that kind of sound like a cheeseburger? Or like a Burger King meal or something? But, anyway. I'll see you guys again with another review. Just to wrap up the Terminator franchise, I'll be back. <laughs>